What's up everybody, my name is Scott Waters and welcome to No Life Till Metal. It's time to whip out your big 10 inch record. <laughs> Uh, that's right, today I thought I'd show off some 10 inch vinyl. Um, don't have a huge collection and there's, I just think they're cool. Um, always looking for more, but uh, I only collect 10 inch vinyl from bands I like. I'm not like interested in just collecting 10 inch vinyl because it's 10 inch vinyl. Um, so most of the stuff you're going to see in here is all hard rock and metal, <laughs> as usual. Um, but let's get right into it. Uh, of course, whip out your big 10 inch, taken right from the song, Big 10 inch record by R. Smith. This was a... Um, promotional single from 2002 that was given away um, at certain retail outlets when you bought the Oh Yeah compilation. Um, so it's not that rare. You can still get these fairly cheap, but uh, they're becoming more and more rare and harder to find. Um, regardless, it has two songs on here. Oddly enough, not Big Ten Inch Record, but there is a, a live version of Lord of the Thighs taken from the Texas Jam, which I wish they would leave, release the entire Texas Jam on vinyl because it's a killer live set. Uh, matter of fact, Ted Nugent comes out and plays with him as well. So. Uh, and then uh, Rats in the Cellar from the Rocks album. Uh, so two songs, 10 inch vinyl uh, from Aerosmith, promotional item. Uh, you can get this thing for around 10 bucks now. Um, you know, from most places. I've seen it on Discogs for as low as $8. So, um, you know, if you're interested in Aerosmith, this is a cool collector's item. They're not going to last forever, but like I said, 2002, they've been around for a while. So, um, next up we've got, uh, oh, this is a great one. This is Overkill, uh, live from Oz. And uh, four song live EP features um, Horoscope, Long Time Dying, Walk Through Fire, and one of my favorite songs from one of their most underrated albums, Necro Shine. Uh, absolutely love Overkill, East Coast band from the New Jersey, New York area. Um, been one of my favorite bands since the 80s. Uh, grew up with the Overkill, you know, they were just one of those bands I grew up with. And uh, this one's really cool. It's on a, um, I think this is a record store day release. It is a gatefold. And. Uh, it comes on a kind of a puke colored vinyl, uh, I don't know, brown and black swirl, whatever you want to call it. Got nice, nice custom center rings. Uh, yeah, nice live set. Played this one just a moment ago right before I started uh, doing this video. Sounds great. Uh, Overkill Live is just awesome. They're such a freaking machine gun band uh, on stage. Um, this one here features uh, a very cool version of Necro Shine um, with a uh, Great guitar solo from guitarist Dave Lintz. Um, and I have met this lineup of the band a couple times actually. Very cool guys. Um, yeah, Necro Shine, one of my favorite albums, one of my favorite live songs on this one. There you go, four songs from Overkill. Thrash Metal. <laughs> All right, um, moving on. This is a doom metal band, Place of Skulls. Uh, this is the Love Through Blood. I can't remember the year on this one. 2006. Um, yeah, this, from what I understand, these are the songs. So Place of Skulls are a doom band uh, put together by Victor Griffin of Pentagram fame. And um, basically, these songs were left off of their first album, the way I understand it. Um, the first album was on a label whose name is slipping my mind at the moment. Um, but for whatever reason, they felt these songs were too religious to Christian to something um, so they were taken off of that album and placed onto this EP released on a separate different label this is on Blood and Iron Records a uh, very cool 10 inch that uh, doesn't show up very often my copy is uh, autographed um, I met Victor Griffin once but that's not what this is autographed thankfully my friend oh, uh, hooked me up with this one he's seen Place of Skulls time live several times um, standard black vinyl Uh, anyhow, four killer songs. I actually love this EP. Um, Consuming Fire, which is just a killer song, should have been on the first album. Uh, Days of Trouble, Cornerstone, and The Blood of Jesus. So you can see by the names of the songs why um, a label might be a little leery about re re you know, releasing something like that. Um, people thinking it's too religious, too Christian, whatever. Regardless, um, you know what? It's music, man. You express yourself through music, and that's what Victor wanted to do on this record. And I love it. I think it's a fantastic record. Um, this next one was, I always want to call this a reunion record. This is um, Hyrax from 2001. Yeah, I think it's 2001. And um, this little 10-inch record, 
was actually not the reunion record. I pulled this out just because I was going to show this. The reunion record was actually the uh, El Diablo Negro 7 inch single from 2000. Uh, I See Blood Red, Slit Your Wrist, and uh, El Diablo Negro. Now, this, the sound on this is a little different from what Overkill's been releasing for the last 15 years. This is definitely some crossover stuff. It's got thrash elements, but it's also got a lot of crossover and punk influences. Whereas, you know, the stuff they've done since then has been just pure thrash metal. Especially the stuff with Glenn Rogers on guitar. Uh, Glenn is just a beast of a, of a guitarist, if you ask me. And he's, you know, he's a riff master. But uh, anyhow, this, this was actually the first, you know, EP, you know, something other than just a 7-inch. Uh, this 10-inch with uh, 8 songs. Some of these songs are pretty short, though. Um, and I think all these are... Barrage of Noise, Murder One, Walk With Death, Broken Neck, Jade, Mouthstone Shut, Beyond the Church, uh, and French Pearl. I think of all these uh, songs, only Walk With Death was ever re-recorded on anything else. Uh, and I believe this is on a colored vinyl too, so maybe I should show that. Yeah, it's on a red, blood red vinyl. Very nice, custom center rings. Hyrax, uh, Southern California, LA basically, thrash metal. Of course, uh, headed up by uh, vocalist and metal man, Kate Nipenya, who I have met as well. Uh, very cool guy. If you ever get a chance to meet Kate, he, he's, he, he loves his fans and he's just very cool to people, so in general. Uh, this next one is a recent pickup that I showed just in a recent uh, video um, from Greg the Egg. This is uh, Blue Oyster Cult Live New York 72. Man, I love this. This was fantastic. Um, this early the live stuff is just so raw, and I love the first three Blue Oyster Cult albums to begin with. Um, yeah, this is what I would call early 70s heavy metal. Uh, you know, today's standards, people are going to call it hard rock, whatever. You know, back in 72, there wasn't much heavier than this. You know, Black Sabbath, that was probably about it, but it's very different from Sabbath, but still very heavy, very dark. Uh, Workshop of the Telescopes, Cities on Flame with Rock and Roll, The Red and the Black, Bucks Boogie, recorded live in New York, 1972, on Munster Records. And I can't remember the year this was released. This is an official release on a bootleg, from what I understand. Um, it's been released under a couple different titles. So, very cool. Once again, Greg, thanks for this. I love it. So, uh, here's the uh, custom center ring. And then the, the record store center, record store, record company center ring on the other side. Well worth picking up if you're a fan of Blue Oyster Cult, 70s hard rock, heavy metal. Uh, just very, very good stuff. Oh, it's, a, it's funny, I forgot there was an. This actually came inside the record, but Monster Records released 2000. So whoever had this before me left this note in there, I just kept it in there. So there you go, from 2000. Uh, next up, we've got. Uh, one of the bands who remained real heavy metal, and uh, actually were one of the, I consider one of the saviors of heavy metal in uh, in the 90s and 2000s. This is uh, Hammerfall, and I love Hammerfall. Uh, I wish their stuff was easier to get on vinyl. Most of their stuff is on CD. I have their entire catalog in CD and lots of special editions as well. This is Natural High from uh, 2006, I think. Yeah, 2006 on Nuclear Blast Records. Uh, this is an EP that was uh, sold with Threshold, the album. Let me take this out of this crappy sleeve. And uh, to be honest, this is, I bought this as a collector's item. Um, it has a uh, natural high, natural high karaoke version, which, okay, Raise the Hammer Live and The Fire Burns Forever uh, on here, which is cool. Four song, again, 10 inch EP. Um, this is still sealed. And I don't keep a lot of records sealed, but I don't know. This is just a collector's item for me, so it's, it's staying sealed. Hammerfall Natural High. I'd love to find Threshold on, you know, actual vinyl. Uh, until that time, it's, it's this is staying sealed. Actually, even if I do find it, it's staying sealed. Uh, most of my records are to be listened to, and I do listen to a lot of records, but uh, this is one that I, don't know, I just decided to keep it sealed as a collector's item. Uh, next one, uh, I, I guess the only way to really say this, this is, uh, I can't think of another word for it other than guilty pleasure. Uh, not really guilty pleasure. I love Gary Newman. Uh, liked him since I was a kid. Heard him in the 80s. And it was a song in Cars. Do 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 do. <laughs> you know, that's, everybody's heard that song. Come on. Uh, that was a song when I was a kid. It was on the radio a ton in the 80s. And I loved that song. And I just became a Gary Newman fan. Picked this up at a local record store. Cheap. Uh, this is uh, I Can't Stop. And it's like a club mix of that version. So it's not something I listen to a whole lot. Back to the faces. 
And I picked this up really cheap. I can't remember how much I picked it up for, but um, it is a 10 inch vinyl. There's the, the center ring. As well, it came with a, um, a flexi disc, um, which I just keep inside of it as well. And you can see on the front, it actually says on there, free NUMA preview flexi disc. I have no idea what's on here. I've never listened to it. Probably never will. Not a big fan of putting flexi discs on uh, on my turntable and uh, taking a chance with my needle on those crappy things. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, Gary Newman, I can't stop. Uh, let's see. So this next two are from the same band. Um, this is a cheap trick found all parts, uh, and this is a four-song EP with a song from '76, '77, '78, '79, which is the way you see it here. Um, new disc features the smash bonus hit single everything works now I don't know if every single copy of this came with that single or not because I've owned several of these uh, matter of fact I just bought another one of these for a friend of mine and it didn't have a single in it nor did it have the sticker on it saying it was a it came with a single but this comes with uh, this 7 inch single which I do keep inside of it and uh, here is the, uh, the center ring Four songs. So you got uh, Day Tripper, which of course is a Beatles cover. Uh, can't hold you. Can't hold on. And then I believe the last two are live. Such a good girl and t and take me on yours. Haven't heard this one in a while, but I'm pretty sure side two is live. Um, like I said, been a while since I've heard this one. But this was released in 1980 on. Um, it was basically Epic Records, but it was called New Disc. Uh, it also had this little insert inside of it for other New Disc 10-inch records that were coming out. Uh, propaganda. Continentals, uh, new music, I don't know, nothing not interests me. I am a Cheap Trick fan though, so that's very cool to have. And then as well, this just came out this this year. Uh, this was a Record Store Day exclusive. Uh, I thought it was a little bit pricey for what you get, but this is a Cheap Trick. Found new parts. Um, this features three songs that were on their new album. Um, so you got When I Wake Up Tomorrow, Do You Believe Me, and No Direction Home. Great songs, and I think their new album is fantastic. Um, even without the, you know, Buddy Carlos being there, who I kind of shame he's not, but uh, regardless, it's a, you know, it's a very, very good record. Kind of has that raw edge, raw rock and roll edge, a little bit sleazy like you expect from Cheap Trick, uh, a little bit poppy like you expect from Cheap Trick, memorable songs, um, it's a good album. So, uh, anyhow, this also has the, a song called Arbuscue, um, which I only listened to once, it was kind of a short, uh, I don't know, it's definitely a B-side track, but uh, very cool to have. It's the only song that's exclusive to this 10-inch uh, EP, as far as I know. Uh, yeah, this was uh, twelve ninety-nine for a uh, you know four-song EP. I thought that was a bit pricey, but that's the way it is at Record Store Day. It seems like everything is uh, getting jacked up in prices anymore. Cheers! All right, next up, uh, Metallica. This is live at Grimey's. And I believe this is a uh, two. Uh, it is tennis vinyl, but it is two LP. If I can get it out of the plastic. Uh, yes, yeah, kind of stuck. Hang on a second here. There we go. Come on. There we go. So there you go. Live at Grimey's, like I said, it is a gatefold. By the way, all the clicking that you're probably hearing in the background is my uh, the dogs running around my house. I left the door open for them today because I'm home by myself and they tend to be unhappy when someone's home and they can't be with them. So, come here, Roxy. So this is Roxy. Hi, babies. See, you, see, you need to get in the camera, honey. Nobody can see you. Come here. <laughs> oh well, she's off to the side. And over here is my daughter's dog, who's who's living with us for a little bit. Uh, he's a he's a monster, but uh, yeah, he's out of the camera too. Sorry. All right, so back to Metallica Live Grammys. Um, no Remorse, Fuel, which is a song I actually do like from the, uh, you know, the albums everybody seems to hate. Uh, uh, Harvester of Sorrow, Welcome Home, Sanitarium, For Whom the Bell Tolls, uh, Freight End of, of Sanity Jam, Master of Puppets, Sabbath True, Motor Breath, Seek and Destroy, Live at the Basement at Grimey's in Nashville, Tennessee, uh, June, sec 20 blah, 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 June 12th, 2008. So there you go. And I uh, don't think this was any color, but I think it was just black. Yeah, custom centering. Black vinyl. Uh, great sound quality. 
band's, you know, fairly tight. Um, it's, it's, you know, I, I like this EP. I think it's a good EP. I think it's a good selection of songs. Um, not a whole lot of, you know, garbage on here. Uh, and, I, and I, like I said, I, I like the song Fuel. I don't care what people say or not, you know. <laughs> I think it's a good song. Uh, I don't think that those two albums that they released uh, were great, but uh, they had a few good songs on them, and Fuel was one of them. Another uh, Record Store Day release. This is a limited edition 10 inch vinyl featuring one of four alternate covers, covers, which I'm not interested in having all four covers. I'm fine with just one. Uh, it includes an exclusive sneak peek demo track, Killer Kings, Killers and Kings, um, and a cover of Nights One Days. Oh man, I can't read or speak today. Uh, including a cover of Ignites, Our Darkest Days Bleeding. This machine head. Uh, and this is uh, Killers and Kings. And like I said, there was different covers on here. Different cars is basically what it was on the front cover. Uh, I'm fine with this as one. Again, this is stupid overpriced. Um, $21.99 for a uh, basically two song EP. Uh, yeah, that, you know, it's crazy. Um, thankfully, um, a buddy of mine picked this up. I'm not sure he had to pay that much or not. I think he probably did. Um, but very cool EP. I'm glad to own it. I'm not a huge Machine Head fan, but I do like Machine Head, especially some of the later stuff. They've actually gotten away from that kind of new metal crap they were doing for a while, and it's, the, the machine gun riffing is just fantastic on this thing. All right, back to some old school stuff from the 80s. Uh, this is... Um, Girl School and Motorhead. This is the Motorhead Girl School St. Valentine's Day Massacre EP. Features four songs, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, three songs, I'm sorry. Please Don't Touch, um, which is a uh, Girl School song. And then Emergency and Bomber. Bomber being, of course, a Motorhead song. But the version on here is done by Girl School. Uh, and then Emergency is uh, and Please Don't Touch are both done by the entire bands, both bands together, playing together. Very cool EP. Some of these songs were re-released later on on other albums, uh, compilations and whatnot from Motorhead, but always liked this uh, EP. Always liked the, the, the gangster looking uh, cover art. Of course, uh, we got there's Lemmy who is no longer with us and Filthy Phil Taylor who is also no longer with us. Both died in just recent uh, months really. Also from the 80s, also girl school. This is, um, come on, let's go. Backed with uh, Tonight and Demolition. So a uh, three song EP. The B side songs are live um, and are, I believe, exclusive to this EP. I don't think they were released on anything else. Uh, and I believe this is on the bronze label, same as the other Motorhead girl school one I just showed. From the UK. I can't remember what years from, I think it might have been from like 82, somewhere around that area. Almost done. We're almost through. There's actually only uh, one, two, three left here. Uh, another Record Store Day exclusive. This is Rush the Garden. Um, this came from the Clockwork, uh, Clockwork Angels album. Um, two versions of the uh, Garden. You got a live version on the B side and a studio version on the A side. Good song and a decent album from them. I kind of like it. When it comes to Rush, 70s stuff just is my absolute favorite. Right up and through the early 80s with uh, moving pictures. Um, after that, a little bit spotty. Um, I like some of it. I think it was a little bit too keyboardy, too poppy in the 80s. But then I thought as the 90s wore on, they started getting back into the more prog rock stuff. Uh, and I liked it even more. But nothing's going to beat those early 70s records. That <clears throat> the heavy vibe they had. Nobody sounded like Rush, you know? Uh, unique vocals, unique sound. And regardless, this is a, this is a garden from, I think this was like 2012 or so. Um, cool little picture disc, 10 inch EP. Um, this actually is not really a 10 inch EP, but I keep it with it because it's actually, it fits there. <laughs> um, this is uh, Halloween. Uh, we got uh, Halloween from Halloween. Um, and uh, what's on the B side of this thing? Um, I can't remember what's on the B-side. It doesn't say. Maybe it's the same thing on both sides. Ah, I can't remember. This is a promotional EP uh, shaped picture disc. And it is around 10 inches. Bigger than a 7 inch. Um, and the sleeve is, is 10 inch. So we'll, we'll include it here. Uh, yeah, Halloween on the A-side. Ah, I can't remember. I should have looked before I did this. I would have swore there was two different songs in here. But it only has one listed. Ha. 
but yeah, this is a promotional EP. It was I don't think this was ever sold officially. Um, came out in 1987, 86, 1987. Halloween, Halloween. And last one. This is another. Another record store day, 10 inches. There's a lot of cool record store day, 10 inches in the last few years, huh? Um, this came out um, right after Redeemer of Souls. Um, this is uh, Five Souls, which is a five song EP. Basically features the bonus tracks that were only available on the CD version of Redeemer of Souls. Um, you get Snake Bite, Tears of Blood, Creatures, Bring It On, and Never Forget. All good songs. I don't know why I say they're great songs. This is on a opaque red vinyl. There are teeny little streaks of black in here as well, um, but mostly just opaque red vinyl. Um, I like this EP, and I like the bonus tracks, but I, I honestly can see why they were put on as bonus tracks and not main tracks. I don't think they're quite as good as the songs on uh, Redeemer of Souls, but I have heard some people say they like this better than the songs on Redeemer of Souls. I don't know. It's, it's Judas Priest. It's very, very good. So, you know what? Saying it's not quite as good is not saying it's bad. It's just preference. <laughs> um, regardless, it's very cool. Uh, EP from Judas Priest, Five Souls, um, and that's pretty much it. Uh, I also keep this in there. I might as well show it since I have it out. Um, it's not. A, it's not even vinyl. This is a CD. Um, this is the Live at the Marquee, raw and uncut. And I, my favorite Twisted Sister have always been those EPs that have the marquee shows and the the back ends, the B side. Um, this is the entire show, raw and uncut, um, on CD and on special picture. You know, the sleeve is. You can see it's shaped as a Twisted Sister logo. Um, it's a very unique item. I think this thing was sold out a long time ago. But I keep it with my 10-inch vinyl because, it, again, it fits and it keeps it from getting uh, beat up with anything else. So, Twisted Sister, live at the Marquee, 1982. So that's it! 10-inch vinyl and, hey, a little bonus CD in there. Um, what you're listening to in the background is... Uh, yeah, that's the vinyl over there somewhere, I guess. Uh, but anyhow, it's Rose Tattoo, <laughs> um, Australian hard rock band. So, hope you enjoyed this edition of Whip Out Your Big 10 Inch. Uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. I uh, love talking to you guys, man. Uh, I really appreciate all my subscribers and viewers. And, the, and you, even the people who just leave a message and, and say, love the video, you know. Um, you may think that's silly, but hey, man, it lets me know that you're watching, that you're interested. And I keep doing these because of that. So, that's it. Subscribe if you haven't already. God bless. Stay strong. <gasps> hey, babies. Come here. Ah. Look. Finally on the camera. <laughs> this is my daughter's dog. And he's a beast. But he's just a lover. Um, as long as you don't cross my daughter. <laughs> Uh, raise a fist to my daughter, and this, this this puppy loses his mind. But yeah, he's just a big lover, as is my my baby right here. So that's it. <laughs> a bonus footage. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye.